I'm Ju, and I'm too lazy to animate. But unlike me, the bubonic plague is a disease that needs little introduction. Not only is it a staple in history classes, but it can pop up in movies, books, and even songs. Ring Around the Rosie is particularly infamous for being about this murderous virus. The plague, or Black Death as some call it, has come back into the spotlight since the recent other outbreak that has happened. Due to the resurgence of thoughts about this disease, it brings up the question, what were the causes and effects of the bubonic plague in the 1300s? The answer seems to be bacteria, a surplus of rats, and how Europe was at the time, both in medical knowledge and in citizens' way of living. For the causes, the illnesses, symptoms, and death were the effects. The bubonic plague, like any other plague, is a bacteria. As said on WebMD, the bacteria for specifically the bubonic plague is called Yersinia pestis. It spreads through bites from fleas, rats, and other similar animals and is quite contagious. While bacteria is the cause of the plague as a whole, there are many more reasons as to why Europe in the 1300s was so littered with death. After all, Cell.com has said that the earliest found strand of the bubonic plague can be traced back to Sweden almost 5,000 years ago, but not show itself as an epidemic like it would later. The reasoning is not too well known, but it is believed that the agents had become somewhat immune to the deadly effects, and because they did not live very close to each other, the disease could not spread well. Europe, on the other hand, was very modern compared to the other countries in the 1300s. People lived close together, sharing houses, rooms, and many other assets and essentials, such as water and buckets. Knowledge about germs and how they spread did not truly exist at the time. Doctors were still being taught that draining people's blood would cure their patients after all. This made all illnesses spread fairly well, but when the bubonic plague imported to a new country via the silk trade, it showed how fast something in an environment like that could spread. It is widely agreed that the massacre brought on by the bubonic plague started in 1347, but an article called Did Pope Gregory IX Order a Medieval Purge of Cats That Caused the Black Death? raises a point that shows how Pope Gregory's actions over a hundred years earlier may have caused the plague to be as bad as it was. In the early 1230s, Gregory IX was the Pope, and he had some interesting ideas about cats. He said that cats, black cats specifically, were satanic and should be killed. A pupable or public decree of the Pope was even made by Gregory called Vox in Roma. In the document, he said how both witches and the devil used cats to do their bidding. The devout Catholics in Europe believed him immediately and massacred house cats. With a whole poopable published about the sinfulness of the felines, future popes hardly did anything to bring more cats into Europe. As the population of their top predators dropped, rat populations were at new highs. Rats and the fleas on those rats were by far one of the largest ways that the plague spread throughout Europe. Years after his death, it seems that Pope Gregory's actions caused the disease to spread at a higher magnitude than it would have. In the rat-filled 1340s, the bubonic plague starts what is called the Black Death in Europe. History.com goes into detail about how it all happened. Infected critters hitchhiked on some ships, made for trading with Asian countries, and this meant that Italy got something that they did not want in the trade. Germs. When the many boats docked in the town of Messina, they were covered in either people who were deadly ill or dead already. It makes sense how quickly an illness could spread on a boat. Since they spread through the air and infected animals, viruses such as the plague thrive in isolated, confined places like those found on a boat in the middle of the ocean. The close quarters of everybody led the virus truly thriving with its contagion. It did not take long for the virus-infected ships and animals to spread its illness to other people on the mainland, even with the boats being cast away almost immediately. Once reaching the people of Italy, it could, and did, spread to the surrounding countries. Many boats being used for trade got infested with the disease and contagious critters who then helped spread the virus even faster. This is how it reached islands such as the United Kingdom and Sicily. The effects or symptoms of the bubonic plague varied from person to person, just as any other illness would, but did have some specific and common traits that made it so deadly. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC, has said that patients with the bubonic plague developed sudden onset fever, headaches, chills, and weak weakness, and one or more swollen, tender, painful lymph nodes, called bubbles. Other symptoms could be diarrhea, vomiting, and other types of aches. The patients also got large swollen bumps on their skin that were called plague boils. This meant that most people infected with the bubonic plague felt weak and in horrible pain. Additionally, in a superstitious society, that means the patients probably felt cursed. 
Such a fast-spreading disease seemed impossible to the people living in the mid-1300s. The only logical explanation to the people at the time was witchcraft, or the devil's workings. Some believed that the putrid smell of the sick and dead is what spread the disease, which is why plague doctors wore those bird-like masks with flowers at the end of the beaks. The song lyrics from Ring Around the Rosie also show this with the line, Pocket Full of Posies. The flowers' nice smell were thought to purify the deceased air. While immense pain was in effect, death was the most infamous part of the virus. Multiple things could kill a plague victim depending on the severity of the symptoms. A high fever could cook a person's brain, or vomiting and diarrhea could dehydrate or starve the infected. The virus, if it got far enough, killed the tissue on the lungs, rendering them useless. Other illnesses could kill a person with the plague too. With their immune system so busy fighting with the plague, other diseases were able to kill the sick before the Black Death even got the chance. Medicine and doctors were no help with the death tolls either. They often accidentally added casualties to patients that were not even sick yet. A common medical practice was to drain people's blood. The logic behind that being that the blood was the problem, so the less of it, the better. With today's sciences, the doctors now know that's a horrible idea that hurts the patients much more than it helps them. Many doctors also refused to care for the ill because they feared to get sick themselves. This made doctors useless at best and deadly at worst. The people infected with the plague were also deadly outside of their illnesses, killing healthy people purposefully out of desperation. It was a common belief of plague patients that the illness must be a punishment from God for not being faithful. This caused the European Catholics to kill Jewish people in an attempt to please God. History.com says that thousands of Jewish people were killed for this reason. While many people were dying, animals were also affected by this plague. Thousands of livestock received the virus, passed it on, and died. One source said that it led to a wool shortage because so many sheep were affected, but I couldn't find backup sources for that. So take that as you will. Of course, the death of about one-third of Europe's population caused other effects down the line. However, at this point, many other factors, such as the Hundred Year War that was happening simultaneously, could have been involved. It is hard to say what was directly affected by the bubonic plague in the years to follow, but Europe has recovered since then. Now, a thing like the bubonic plague seems to be back, and people are getting alarmed. Some think that it may be as bad as the horrible thing that happened in the Middle Ages. However, this information is not comparable. Medicines and sciences have advanced so far, but the current virus that's spreading is nothing that we've ever seen before, and it's much harder to attack. Although, it's quite unlikely that healthy would be killed by mispractices and the virus of today has completely different causes and effects of the bubonic plague, but it's nice to know history before it repeats itself.